Welcome back to PR After Hours. I'm your host, Alex Greenwood, bringing you your weekly cocktail of PR and marketing tips that will help you and your business. Stick around. We'll get started right after these messages. Hello, listeners. It's me, Alex, from PR After Hours. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. And I wanted to talk to you just for a moment about the way I get this show right into your earbuds every week. It's because I use Anchor FM. Now, I've told you previously that I've been podcasting since 2006, back when we used stone knives and bear skins and a couple of Dixie cups and string. Anchor FM has really, really streamlined this and made it simpler for people who don't know the first thing about setting up a podcast or don't have you know time to learn all the pro tools and stuff because it's all right here first thing it's important to know is it's free there are certain tools that will allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer anchor will then distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on spotify apple podcasts and many more that's huge distribution is a big pain in the butt to be honest with you so it's really great anchor fm can do that for you and you're not paying hosting fees that adds up every month it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place so download the free anchor app or go to anchor fm to get started and be sure to join me in the virtual cocktail lounge on pr after hours You know, there's an image about the Hollywood publicist or or just the or even for books, a New York publicist. Right. I mean, if you watch any amount of television or movies, you know, there's always some character who goes and calls their publicist, who's usually pretty, pretty high octane and it's got a is on a mission. And boy, is just kind of snappish and the whole thing. It's a whole it's a whole deal, which I find pretty amusing, considering I've spent the past 25, 26 years doing a lot of publicist type work. But. One thing I haven't really done, I've not really focused specifically on that area, and I'm excited today to welcome to the virtual lounge, Tracy Lamori, who has made an art form in her own way out of being a successful, and I mean very successful, publicist. And we're going to get into her story right now because I think you're going to find it fascinating. Tracy Lamori, welcome to PR After Hours. Hello, thank you so much, and I'm thrilled to be here. Tracy, I looked into your backstory. You have no training whatsoever as a publicist. That's right. That's a big part of my story. And that's, <laughs> I'm actually really proud of that because, as you said, you know, I managed to take it to the, you know, the heights. I don't have to prove myself anymore or convince anybody I'm good. I can just point to my list of successes and awards and all that stuff. So, yeah, and part of what I, you know, teach people is, you know, and that ends up being part of my story because I also speak about how all of us have something probably um, in your life that you haven't thought about monetizing or even thought about becoming a business out of that you might just do because you love or it's another and that's what I ended up having a light bulb moment one day that skills that I had literally developed through another part of my life that I wasn't even thinking about as a, as a work thing you know led me to where I am today so I talk often about how we should you know examine your life and build a life you love based on the things that you love we don't think about that and then also um part of my message too is that anybody can get in the media and I think my life proves that I've literally created an international profile twice once on the human rights thing completely unrelated for 10 years and had literally global media about that and then not using one as a you know like none of those contacts knew me or whatever and then again building a completely different international profile on the business entrepreneurship and speaking to entrepreneurs so that shows you I'm really good at what I do and that's why I speak to entrepreneurs now and uh, educate them about what PR is and how they can kind of utilize some of those tricks that we have in our tool belt in their own businesses. Yeah, I mean, you're the founder and managing director of, of Lamori Media and uh, a Universal Women's Network 2020 Women of Inspiration winner for the Women in Media Award. You're the author of the book Get Repped, not ripped, 
repped build your brand with effective public and media relations i'd like to get ripped myself but I'll, well you're I'll, supposed I'll, to think that too because i'm also the edgy you know so that's the kind of you know edgy <laughs> savvy you know what i mean so that's good that you kind of right. that's not that i'm telling you to get ripped but you know that that's exactly the kind of not ripped wrapped <laughs> get wrapped yes and and that's the thing you know you're you've got such an interesting background i wonder if we could just detour for a moment though let's talk about this what was this seminal moment in your life Life, which led you to understand that, wow, I have a gift for, for being a publicist. It was literally a light bulb moment where I sat there and, and I had, had, you know, a long history of getting, which I can briefly, I have to kind of give a brief background just to say that. But so I learned to write my first press release on the Alta Vista, the precursor to Google. Uh, and my motivation, I was in sales and marketing, but just entry level and never thought about making PR as a career or anything. I had a radio show with my husband, Dave Parkinson, a few years before that. We no longer had that platform. So we were making, you know, the early days of the internet, still wanted to have a voice to talk about social justice and issues we cared about and we ended up hearing about a case of an innocent man who was on death row which is so you know nothing that i was ever dealing with name of jimmy dennis in pennsylvania something called us who knew who knows why to to respond to that and we ended up building a pro bono campaign now i call it a campaign like that we were to publish 20 year campaign that we you know we basically got media attention for him and the cause and we were on cnbc and cnn and you know all major media and long story short on his side we he was released in 2017 so that was a successful story absolutely factually innocent in the world agrees and knows that now but the skills that i learned along that journey which is how to write a press release how to get media attention how to be in the media how to be on that hot seat how to be interviewed you know in my late 20s made media nothing you know very familiar to me and you know i, I realized a little bit later that and now I know for sure 80 to 90% of entrepreneurs is a huge mystery to people just don't have any concept of it's like magic to them. I'm sitting here. I'm just a, and the people on the, on the magic box are different. You know, when I right. teach people that the only difference between you and the people that, you know, that they interview in the media are that some a publicist or that entrepreneur told the media about the work that they're doing. Right. So it's not magic. It's there's actual skills involved. So one day I had a light bulb moment and I don't know why I didn't have it to 10 years before that, but I literally had a light bulb moment sitting there thinking, huh, I don't want to make another 20 calls an hour for something I don't care about. Like I was yeah. saying, uh, you know, ISO 9000 is great, but it's not a passion of mine, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> I didn't Tracy call you about something we don't care about. I didn't want that to be my life anymore. And I literally had a light bulb moment, like from this moment that, wait a minute, those I've developed skills that are monetized, you know, that's actually a big Thing. Those are monetizable skills. And from that moment, I literally went on um, free cycle or up work and some site, you know, sites in those days where you can get some um, freelance contract work. And I started proving myself that way. Then I opened my business as a general partnership for five years, increasingly better and better, you know, bigger and bigger clients, knocking myself and doing 18 hours a night of work being creative, finding other ways, finding, you know, until all of a sudden, I've elevated my clients enough that people can see my good work. And then this year with COVID, what else is there to do at the same time as serving my clients? I started doing the podcast route myself, promoting my own business a little bit. And now it's, I mean, I've literally done 160 podcasts between October and next April, speaking to entrepreneurs and executives around the world about this. So that shows you again, elevate, use everything that you have, continue to find other spaces, you know, with what you've already done. And that's how you build that thought leadership and, you know, everything else that we hear those, those catchphrases about. You know, Tracy, I, here's what I'm hearing though. Besides all the tactical stuff you picked up along the way, you learned a vital lesson, it sounds like to me. And if I'm putting words in your mouth, you will, of course, disabuse me of that notion. But you learned that, I heard this early on, you learned that the people on the other side of the screen or the other end of the phone or, or, or on the other side of that microphone are just people and they're doing a job that requires them to learn facts and learn information and disseminate that properly. If exactly. you want to be successful dealing with the news media, you have to do a couple of things. And one of those is what you're very skilled at doing is packaging information in a way that gets their interest. And then two, giving it to them in such a way to where they feel like they have just become the biggest expert on what you're talking about. 
That's Fair a enough. really good way of putting it too. Yeah, the expert hadn't thought about it that way, but it's true. Because it's funny because when I was a kid, I used to say I wanted to be a reporter. And one day somebody asked me, what did you want to be when you were a kid? I said, a reporter. And then I went, oh, <laughs> I guess I did. <laughs> I didn't realize that I'd found my way back without me, you know. And now what do I do is I disseminate information to the news people so that they can then disseminate that information if they agree that it's newsworthy to the public. So I'm the reporter, you know, we, PR people are the, the reporters, reporters. <laughs> right. right, exactly. You know, if you have a good, I found this in my career and, uh, and, and I'll just say it from the get go and my audience, regular listeners know this, uh, the, the, the media relations portion of it. I was a reporter for years. I was in radio, I was in TV. I did all that stuff. Um, but that part of it is, is probably my least favorite part of it. And it's not because I don't like the people in the media to me though, to me, it's a very challenging job. It's hard because you're constantly having to, to, to package information and find a hook and do all these things um, and, and keep your reputation in place. Right. Yeah. Um, and if you so don't for, do it, like, I mean, if you keep failing at it, then you keep failing and there's no, <laughs> you know, yeah. So yeah and, and you can't control like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's all about the pitch, right? Like I can't control yeah. that edit. Like I, when people hire me at the beginning, I'm like, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to get you in this or that or whatever. Cause I don't own Reader's Digest or the New York times or, but I have, you know, I have a great history of getting clients in those things, but unless I own that, I can never make that promise. And then I say no ethical public scan, but what I can promise you is, you know, my skills, my hard work, my strategies, my writing, and that normally that results in these successes. And if you don't, if I don't get you the New York Times and Reader's Digest, I'm going to find ten other things that are going to make you more likely to get there. You know what I mean? So about building. Yeah, Tracy, I could reach through this Zoom and hug you. I would because I literally, <laughs> you got, you're not going to believe this. I literally say that to every new client. I, I I can't guarantee you the front page of the newspaper because guess what? I don't own the newspaper, but what you I can guarantee you, yeah. you, I swear to God, I do. But I say, <laughs> well, what I can do for you is give you 25 plus years experience in getting good placements for clients. And, and, I, and I just always make sure though, they understand. I've got one former client who's now a very good friend and he always just says, do you guarantee this about anything <laughs> I say? Like I say, I'll meet you for lunch. Well, do you guarantee it? Because I don't think you guarantee <laughs> anything. But I mean, you have to be because setting expectations is such a huge part of what we do. Yeah. Especially when I think entrepreneurs and, you know, they don't know, like at least people, 80% of them have never dealt with that before. They don't. So a lot of times that you know, have that conversation, you have that over and over to make them really understand, here's what you're paying for. This is not like an ad. This is the opposite of an ad. When you think I'm going to, you know, buy a marketing guy, I'm going to buy an ad, I'm going to see this. You don't know that with me. You know what you're going to see is my writing, you're going to see my skill. And what I can tell you is to be very irregular that after all that writing and all those skills and all my strategies for you not to get anything. And if that did happen, it's never happened. And if that did happen, we would continue to work together until we were both happy that, you know, we'd gotten something, right? Right. But, you know, and, and I've had to explain to clients too, they're like, well, why, if you can't guarantee it, then why do I need you? I said, well, then go buy an ad. That's fine. And yeah. I said, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something about that ad. That ad is great but it will not have the same weight with a, with a reader or a viewer or a listener as exactly. third-party credibility you get from what we do. Yeah. In fact, a client told me yes, two days ago, literally told me two days ago, we all, we all know this, but she verbalized this. She's, we, we've worked together six weeks, six weeks. And she said to me, you have changed my business and you've changed my life. And I said, why do you say that? And she said, so far, we've gotten four articles in six weeks and like two podcast things and four and two of the art. One of the articles is really good industry, strong title, talking about funding and stuff like that. Right. And she said, even from the first one, which wasn't a big wasn't Reader's Digest, which is a little like a web thing, but it was like um, it was strong. And she said from the first thing, she started to see people that hadn't she hadn't heard from in 20 years, literally were messaging her was like, oh, wow, looks like you're doing some good stuff. Huh? That's really neat. People were coming out of the woodwork. Investors were more interested. Other industry people were like, good for you, literally from seeing one article. And then there was a second article and a third and a fourth over six weeks. So now people are like, wow, you're really rocking this. Your business is, and nothing has changed except she had the publish. She was already doing that stuff, right? But now right. she has somebody pointing the finger and getting media to write about it. So now everybody, like her aunts, her family members, people are, oh, I'm so proud of you coming up and giving her a hug. She's seen now. They're noticing what she's doing because the media is noticing it, right? 
you know, Tracy, I, I bet you've been here and I, this, I've had a, a relatively triumphant week recently. Can I just tell you real quick? Um, got a new client, won't say who or what, you know, but, uh, um, are we the stated from, goals were to, this, mm -hmm. oh, we, just a little, are we back? There we go. Yeah, we're back. Okay. Oh, good. Uh, every, every, but all the listeners, usually I remove these. If I don't remove it, listeners, you know the drill. We're all on Zoom here. Okay. Um, a client, she wanted to get some local public publicity about something she did that was pretty great, pretty unique. And, and uh, well, I felt like she had a good story. Uh, her initial idea was going one direction. I said, let's change it to this. Got her a good hook. Well, long story short, I got her TV. I got her magazine. I got her several newspapers. And I got her several trades. And now she said to me, Alex, I really don't have time to do any more of this. <laughs> I have to work. I can't too. do any more. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the best, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. But yeah, that's why people, someone asked me, what is success the other day? And I was like, you know what? My business is increasingly more successful. Like I had a best year in December. My December was best, better than any month ever. And then my January beat that. And I'm actually frightened that my February might actually beat that. And that's literally as a result, even in these difficult times, I think of this ramping up where I started doing podcasts as opposed to just sending my clients to them. Because what I'm noticing, which I didn't realize, you know, we're media people. So I was thinking of podcasts as, as media alternatives, which they are. Right. But also, oh my goodness, in the age of COVID, business to business people out there who are listening, it is insane, insane for marketing and networking, like beyond the beyond. I've literally, I wasn't looking for any of this in about 40, out of the 40 or so that I've done already, or maybe 60, I don't even know, but four podcasters have hired me. I wasn't looking for that. Two others are talking about it right now because they're business people brand, wanting to amplify their brands. And after talking right. to me for an hour, they're like, huh, just like, you know, I didn't realize that, right? So now, but so, but the same with any business to business service provider, like right now, people are making connections. We all have the same tool and I work with celebrities too. So I know that it, when I say it is everybody, I mean, everybody from celebrities to whoever the heck is doing the same thing you are right now, sitting there in front of that screen, trying to figure out how to, how, how to, you know, connect and make money and do whatever in this new world. So this is a, a prime opportunity and time to make those connections, to reach out to people, to speak, to, you know, do podcasts, do, I'm thinking of the other end of COVID, I'll be doing maybe half of the actual PR work and then in, in half of educating people about why yeah. they need to have PR, because I, I seem to be segueing into that naturally. But I still love the work. I'll never stop doing the work because that serotonin rush, you know, when you could be like, yes, I got you at Reader's Digest. And you know, you're going to call the client and they're just going to be like, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, to us media is, oh, we've been there. We've done that. Like I could be on any media, CNN, whatever. It'll be like, oh, cool. It'll be a nice. It's great. You know, it's good. But I'm not going to freak out about it. I've done it. I've been there. I've done that. Right. But people, right. when it's there, it's new. And also it, it literally builds their business. Like I had the one client that hired me, age 26, never never been in any media at all. She, a life coach, which a lot of people are coaches. How do you differentiate yourself? And she decided to share her personal story and that's how she was going to do it. You know, like make it. And so she's bipolar, successfully living with bipolar. Not even 24 hours after she hired me, I found her a spot in Good Housekeeping. And it was the print issue. So she comes out in the print Whoa. issue of Good Housekeeping as her first ever out the gate. And so for the next year, two years, everything we pitched is like, as seen in good housekeeping, I'm not my mental illness. And that's what she wants to talk about. So she's got like, I can't even count now, length, length of things this long where she'd been interviewed as a result of that one. It, yeah, and Tr Tracy's making a great point, listeners. That um, now it's unusual, maybe not with Tracy, but it is unusual for most of us to get you. That, that was, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, and was she's rare. not, she's not saying hire me and I'll get you good housekeeping guaranteed, as we said previously. No, However, <laughs> what I do tell, and what I do tell my clients and prospects is, look, what we should do is build a foundation because every every publicity, every bit of publicity, you get every every website, every TV interview, Absolutely. you stack those up and then we use those as assets to get you in the bigger, Absolutely. broader media. Yeah. So, oh my God, so I love Trace Can we talk every day, Alex? Because I never get to talk <laughs> to people who get this. <laughs> I swear, there's like three things you've said that I've said. We're like, yeah, because it's true. We speak with people in different industries. And people don't really yeah. understand PR. So we're forever educating all our clients about, right. you know, unless they're like an actor, we, you know, they know what the deal is. But in terms of business, right. they just don't really, it's the process to understand it. It's a different way of thinking, right?
well, well, Tracy, when I when I saw that we scheduled this interview, we kind of I knew what you did. And we we're going to leave it open. I thought, let's see where it goes. And part of me was like, well, do we just talk inside baseball to the PR folks and the marketing folks who listen, or do we speak to the to the broader audience who you're trying to get to hire you and to me trying to get to hire get them to hire me too and educate them a little bit about what we do? So how about this? Well, one, you're you're always welcome back. You know that, right? Okay, but two. Because you're going to need to vent after you deal with all these other podcasts where there are people who sell insurance and stuff. Okay, <laughs> you're going to want to come back and talk to me because we're PR right. people. Okay, <laughs> but how about in the, in the in the minutes we have left on our program, which is a gosh, it's just flown by. You're so good. Uh, let's let's pre let's pretend the listener. Let's let's assume the listener out there, and you've got about four or five minutes. They sell them on it. Why do they need you? Tell and when I say that, we've kind of already told them why, I guess, but maybe you should work through the process you have. Is that okay? If if yeah. you brought me on board, let's say it was me and I'm just selling insurance. You brought me yeah. on, you're onboarding me. What's that process look like? Yep. So the first thing I do is I have them send me, of course, any existing links, any existing bio, whatever that I say, but I'm going to rewrite that bio because it's not a bio I want with that punchy little pitch, right? So I, I'm going to take everything that you do and you may come to me thinking about just your business, but I want to have an hour where we talk. And then you're going to, I'm going to learn in that hour other things about you that may help, um, there may be different places I can pitch you as a result. Like I was saying to someone the other day, you know, you sell widgets, but maybe you love, you know, motor car racing. And I may, I need to know that because I may see an opportunity, a, me a meeting about motor car racing, you know, where I'm going to be able to get you in there. So essentially, yeah, so on board, get all their information, um, to understand them 100% as a person, as a business person, why are they in what they do? So what is their business and their product? Then secondly, most importantly to me, what are you, who are you and what do you do? Why do you do that? Because where marketing thinks about the product, the sale, I am you know more invested in, in that person and in bringing them up as an expert, which is going to benefit their product and whatever else. So yeah, I look at all... In, all aspects of the person, put it together, write a pitch. I start um, strategizing about where, what their, what their plan is like in terms of who they want to reach, what they already had in their head. And then also I start looking at the media world of things that are incoming that we can insert them into. So things like help a reporter out and source bottle and matchmaker and pocket match and aggressively find all those opportunities find awards opportunities I think is huge not just in their industry but all of us there's awards all of us qualify for that we're not even thinking about there's international ones or this that. so I find anything that will elevate them and like you said all these things are building blocks so I my job is to um, elevate and celebrate that's what I that's what I said one day I, that's what PR is elevating and celebrating the amazing work other people are doing and yeah so I, I like to say it doesn't matter whether you're a doctor lawyer candlestick maker whether you clean you know you know um, toilets at the hotel you are have a story I could get you into media anybody there's a million you may not be CNN right off the top but like you said there's a million sources there's a million platforms and starting to build that third party credibility so other people are talking about what you're doing that elevates you um above your competitors it attracts you know clients and it gets you on stages and just it, it gets you to be a thought leader that those phraseology that we all hear about these days is there one big misconception you've run against run up against in all on your years of doing this that, that you can't explain and that you have to constantly educate clients about i guess a lot of it's a misconception well, number one, that PR isn't for them. You know, people think that it's for the it's for the celebrities, and they often don't right. think of it as for the average person at all. Um, so once we get past that, is you know really just te a lot of it is self confidence and um, yeah. teaching them that you know I, I so I speak now about build up yourself so that you can build up your brand and then the activist part of me. What do you do once you've made your million dollars? Once you're successful. I hope that you use those platforms and that money and those extra things that you've developed and hopefully that I've helped you develop to continue to do good in the world. So I say, you know, build up yourself so you can build up your brand and make your million dollars, whatever you are motivated to do. And then you can build up your community, build up, you know, do good things with all of that, with those platforms, because that's the end. You know, that's ultimately success. If we, if we don't, if we gain all these platforms and never do anything beyond just our own goals with it, then I don't think we're really ultimately very successful. All right. Well, unfortunately, this press conference is at a dead, but um, <laughs> Tracy, I'm going to extend an open invitation anytime you want to come back. Like I said earlier, you're going to want to recharge with another PR guy. So right? Anytime. You, come, you, you can invite me whenever you think that, I'll, you know, I'll you, do you it. can handle a little bit more. 
PR girl. I think it'd be great. <laughs> now, now, real quick before we go, how do people find out more about you? What's your website? Oh, yeah. They can find me at lamorimedia.com, and that's L-A-M-O-U-R-I-E, like Lamore and then I-E, media.com. I live on Facebook, Tracy Lamori. Instagram is where you can see all my current projects and interviews and all, you know, up to the minute fun stuff, which is Tracy Lamori PR Media. And um, they, what else? They, they can, if they want to work with me, they can phone me. Uh, 289-788-5881 is my Canadian number or in Beverly Hills, 424-444-8052. And I'm super genuine. So the, I have to tell you the Beverly Hills number just rings through to Toronto, <laughs> but it, it does help you know, my California clients not have to call long distance. So it has to now, now, what about the book? Is the book out or can they get the book somewhere? The book is waiting. I'm just doing a little bit of a revision because there's, this was such a crazy year, 2020. There's a couple of things that came to me that I should include in it. Not, you know, 2020 specific, but just about, um, you know, one story, I'm adding some stuff in there, but what, what do you do when you've built your profile and you've got a great media profile uh, but then you have to be careful you don't, you know, ruin that in an emotional moment or, um, you know, with anger or mental health issues or whatever. So I was doing a little bit about right. when to, you know, to be careful about your, so, uh, about your presence. I saw, I witnessed some professional meltdowns this year that were really sad to see, or at least one, you know, after somebody had developed their, their, um, this was witnessing from afar, but someone who spent a lot of time developing and showing the world all the great things they could do. And then kind of all fell apart within a few months because they had, had uh you know personal issues a lot of people have in 2020 right so sure. i had i had a chapter about what do you do you know how do you contribute be careful once we have that public profile how to maintain it and you know pitfalls and that kind of stuff so uh, probably summer now okay good well we'll we'll keep an eye on that maybe when it's actually officially out that'd be a good chance to have you back and we could talk about it and i'll get a copy and read it and all that um yeah um care and feeding of your reputation is a huge thing that's part of what i do the most with my clients is making sure their overall reputation is managed i do a tracy i do a lot of crisis com work too so that's that's kind of where i go but uh i i still do what you do i just nowhere near as good so uh okay, all right focusing on something different <laughs> we're all focused yeah on like you said, like exactly. we should be a great team because I do, I do a little crisis comp but not as much because I'm doing all mostly this stuff. So when I do that, I'm always, I'm a little bit out of my element. I'm like, well, let's, you know, pull in someone else. So maybe we'll have occasion to work together. I think it sounds good. I think it sounds good. Tracy Lamore, oh my gosh, author, PR, publicist extraordinaire. Thank you so much for joining us here in the virtual lounge. Thank you. Oh, you know what that means? Looks like it's last call here at your virtual lounge for PR news views and interviews. Don't forget, you can ask me a question anytime. You can do it through our Twitter account, which is at ours PR, or even better, you can send me a message vocally. I would love to hear your voice and I'll answer it on the show. There's a link in the show notes. All you have to do is sign up through Anchor FM. It's free, doesn't take long and you record your message, I get the message, I will play your audio, just give me your first name in the city you live in, and then I will answer the question to the best of my ability right here on the show. Don't forget to, if you're enjoying this podcast, you can support it and help increase the frequency and value of the show. Just consider being a sponsor for your brand or your agency or just yourself because you're like, I like this show. Or just drop a few coins in the virtual tip jar. Either way, there's links in the show notes. Please check that out. All of that, of course, being in the show notes where you're listening right now or at prafterhours.com. I see that they're turning up the lights. Last call is over, and I've got to clean up this virtual lounge. And until next time, I'm Alex Greenwood, and you've been listening to PR After Hours on Anchor FM. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. But have you been there, done that, and got the t-shirt? Now's your chance. If you are a big fan of the Virtual Lounge right here at PR After Hours, why don't you tell the world and take our spiffy logo and plaster it across your chest for the whole world to see? Well, for the whole world to see on Zoom or or whenever you do finally get out of your house. The PR After Hours tee shows that you're an exclusive member of the Virtual Lounge. It's a cool, comfortable, ring-spun, uh, soft cotton tee. Um, we look for the best possible options we could go for in these t-shirts, and it's in a variety of colors. You can get them in dark heather gray, royal blue, storm, 
maroon or good old fashioned white. These are really comfortable shirts. We offer them a premium unisex tee from extra small all the way to 4XL and a women's slim fit tee, which goes from small to 2XL. They are a hoot, they look cool, and besides, they'll, they'll do what we love to do most here at PR After Hours, start a conversation. The PR After Hours t-shirt is available now on Bonfire. The link is in the show notes, and I hope you'll look into getting one. I not only think they look cool and be great conversation starters, but they'll help us keep the virtual lounge doors open. Thanks so much. 